Howdy, AP Pregal. It is Ms. Kosh. We are back working Mr. Passwater's notes. This is for section 1.3. Um, so I may teach it tiny, a little bit differently in my class, but I thought I would go ahead and show you how his notes work. Um, okay, so for any linear function, the average rate of change of um, any length input Input value interval is constant. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm like, what are they talking about? So if you think about it, if I want to find the average rate of change from this point to this point, um, that average rate of change ends up being the slope of the line. Well, okay, if I look at the average rate of change of that input versus the average rate of change over this set of values, uh, not input, this interval versus that interval, it's the same. Well, think about it. If it's linear, the slope of the line is constant the whole time. So if we have a constant rate of change, then we know our graph is linear. Um, so this table gives us selected values of the function. Explain why the function is not a linear function. Okay, so notice, let's see, when I go from here, I added one, I added two, I added four. From here, I add three, I add three, I add three. Um, it looks like, oh, my y values are just increasing by three the whole time, so I must have the same average rate of change. But no, um, the average rate of change over the interval from one to two, the average rate of change would be, um, average rate of change, would be equal to three over one, three, okay. But the average rate of change from the interval two to four is now three over two, which is not the same. If it is, then I'll give you three halves of a million dollars and you give me three million dollars back. I'm just kidding. Okay, um, consider the quadratic function, um, g of x equals x squared, complete the table. Uh, okay, so 9, 1, 1, 9, 25. Average rate of change. So on this, we do add 2 each way, so this whole way down. So the denominator this whole time, we were adding 2. Um, so the average rate of change is going to be this minus this over 2. So 1 minus 9 is negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. 1 minus 1 is 0 over 2 is still just 0. 1 to 3, so 9 minus 1 is 8 over 2 is 4. This minus this is uh, 16 divided by 2 is 8. Okay, what do you notice about the average rates of change? Okay, so notice on this one, they're, they're giving us something that's quadratic. Um, and then we're looking at, we found these values, we found that their average rate of change um, is increasing. So we have to go from, like think of your number line, here's negative 4, here's 0, here's 4, here's 8. Those values are increasing. And, um, but they're, the, the average rate of change is not um, a constant, okay? So like if I had, if I had um, a constant average rate of change that would be linear, it's not, but notice on here, they are changing um, by the same amount, okay? So if the average rate of change is changing at a constant rate, it's quadratic. Um, what do you notice about the average rate of change over consecutive, uh, what's happening is that the rate of change is changing at a constant rate. The average rate of change is changing at a constant rate. Yeah, something like that. Okay. We can also think of this as being like the second difference. So you would look here. We could say, um, oh, well, this was, yeah, we need these numbers. This is the first difference. Or the, yeah, this is the average rate of change. And then this is this is sometimes the second difference. So the, um, and the second difference leads to something quadratic. But AP doesn't really talk about the first difference and the second difference. They talk about the average rate of change and the change of the average rate of change. Oh, okay. There we go. Um, so notice one, two, three, four. My x values are all um, equally spaced. What did I do? I added one. I added three. I added six. Right? Yes. Um, did this? This one I added two, and now I added three. Okay. So this is not. If this had, if this had all been the same, if my rate of change was constant, it would be linear. If my rate of my if my rate of change was changing at a constant rate, so if this second level here was constant, it would have been quadratic. It is not. So on this one, we will say either. Right here, um, we have 1, 2, 5, 10. Okay, so this is not constant. Um, so we have, what do we do? We This becomes 1 over 1. So if the average rate of change from here to here, I don't know how to show this. Average rate of change is going to be 1 over 1. From here to here, we have 3 over 3. Okay, which is equal to 1. From here to here, I have 5 over 5. Okay, so 5 over 5 is also equal to 1. So we had the same average rate of change. They just made this look confusing because the spacing in here wasn't the same. Or maybe what we could have done, now that I'm seeing it, was 1, 2, 5, 10. 1, 2, 5, 10. And then what was the other one? 
zero one four nine. Oh, they're squares. Zero one four nine. Um, what we can recognize here is that we added 1, we added 3, we added 5. Over here, what did we do? We added 1, we added 3, we added 5. We can see that this, the ratio of this over this, the whole way down, is constant. Okay, so that would have been a better way to write it. But, you know, here we go. Um, on this one, what am I doing? I'm adding 2, I'm adding 2, I'm adding 2. Okay, what am I doing here? I'm adding 2, I'm adding 1, I'm adding 0. That is not constant, but what did I do to go from two to get to one? I subtracted one. From one to get to zero, I subtracted one again. So this one is quadratic. Oh, we forgot to say this is linear. Well, maybe I said it, I just didn't write it. Okay, super. More on concavity. The average rate of change over equal length input values intervals is blank for all small. Um, if it's concave up, it's increasing. Yeah, if the average rate of change is increasing, we're going to be concave up. The average rate of change over equal length input value intervals is decreasing, but it's concave down. Okay, so here's the point. Notice on this, these are all equally spaced. And what did we do? We subtracted 3, we subtracted 2, we subtracted 1. These values are actually increasing. Um, so if they're increasing, this is going to be concave up. That's an up. There we go. Um, maybe I'll verify one of these in just a second. Notice these are all the same. That's convenient. What did we do here? We went up by three. We went up by three. We went up by three. This is going to be linear, so it's neither. So if it's, I mean, it's linear. You could tell me it's linear, but the concavity doesn't, there is, it's not concave up or concave down. Uh, okay, what did we do? We added six. We added five. We added two. Is that right? No, ha <laughs> ha, four. <laughs> My bad. Okay, um, these values are decreasing, so it's concave down. Would you like me to show you what I'm talking about? The answer is yes. Okay, <laughs> if I come in here, let's see, I can come up to this, to, I can come over and delete that whole list and delete this whole list. Um, we had 1, we had 1.1, we had 1.2, we had 1.3. Um, we'll do this one. We one seven eleven thirty, not a hundred. That okay. Um, and if I go to graph this exit, whoop, graph. Okay, you'll notice these are starting to take somewhat of a, a concave down pattern. Cool. All right, those are Mr. Passwater's notes on one point three. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, comment all down below. Come back. I will be doing this all year long. All right. Good luck to you. Go practice.